time for Lady Betola. <laughs> We're at Rock City Storytime. We're so happy to be here doing a show for you guys. We usually perform here on the first Sunday of every month. So if you like what you see, you can come back then, see it again. If you don't like it, you know which night of the month to avoid. <laughs> we're going to do a little long form set for you guys, but we're not just going to do it alone this time. We have a special guest, one of my funniest friends, one of my beautiful baby boys. He's <laughs> up here today in his tan sedan. It's Eric Boo! <laughs> somebody in the audience to join us on stage and kind of give us a brief synopsis of a book that you had growing up that you're like, I know this book, I love this book, I don't think everybody knows this book. <laughs> or it could be like a story that someone in your family told you just on tour. Sure, sure. If you have a, a story of family trauma, you can come share it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a fictional thing. Yeah, no, no, a fictional star plays. Uh, any improviser as well. Anyone who's in the show. I saw a hand in the back. Yeah! yeah. Tell everyone your name, please. My name is Jamie. Jamie, tell us about this story. Yeah, so um, for those of you who have heard of the American Girl Doll series, yeah. I was obsessed with the American Girl Doll kit. And she had short blonde hair like myself, so that's probably why I really related to her. But she was from the Depression era, oh. so she was like in the Depression. Um, and one of the things that she was like, I think she was like a writer or something. Now she was probably six years old, but I don't remember. But um, she was like a writer, and so she had like her own little typewriter. And I think I related to it so much because I had my own typewriter as a kid. And so I was like, I would pretend that I would like write little articles and journalism and stuff as Kit. So, yeah, mm -hmm. nothing more complicated. Did anything happen to her in any of the stories? Were there like actual stories of things that happened? Yeah, so she would, um, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she would like go try to like solve, not mysteries, but like she was like journalism kind of stuff mm -hmm. as a six year old, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Did she make it out of the depression? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, born in the depression and was, it was 1920s. So. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I think you're just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> the stories were set. It was like a historical thing. Oh, so you're saying all the stories were set. Yes. I asked if she'd survive. You gave oh, the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> we're gonna give it up for Jenny! <laughs> this is Improv City Storytime. <laughs> And I knew you wanted an Xbox, but I got you a typewriter. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> you write your own stories. Explore your own imagination, you know? Loud. <laughs> Xbox would have been just as loud, I promise you. Yeah. Put headphones on, no one can hear. Well, son, money's been tight, all right? So you got this typewriter. Finished typewriter must cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> I mean, the price tag says twelve hundred dollars. Right. Maybe we could come up with an arrangement. Oh. <laughs> so you seem like a dapper strong man. I'm a real strong yodeler. <laughs> well, it's a long time since old Thelma has been serenaded by the voice of a man, whether it goes up and down and up and down or not. Uh, if I if I sing for you, you'll let me take the typewriter home. <laughs> You have to sing for me every weekend for a year. <laughs> a whole year? Can I just record it and just send it to you as a voice memo? It needs to be original every week. <laughs> you haven't been around, like, at all. <laughs> and all of a sudden you just get a lavish gift? <laughs> and then make up for your I have made so many sacrifices for you, son. <laughs> You're gonna be a writer! <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we gotta, it goes, I don't know how to work that thing. We gotta put paper in it first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, try it again. I want to follow my passions. I want to be. Try it again. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, you guys. What happened? Just, just try it. Just type again. Just 
And it's because I have a re rich, deep voice, and yours never cut out of puberty. <laughs> and you somehow marketed that skill, that niche skill of yours. So I don't make it about me. <laughs> well, looking at your chart, I've never seen this before, but the rest of you continues to age. <laughs> looking at the MRI, it seems like your vocal cords stopped at 14. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> I have a strong, deep voice, Z. No, I was, I was recording that last sentence, and I'm just going to play it back for you. Well, it's fine. <laughs> just got the end. Uh, you know Brad Pitt, right? <laughs> We're going to bring you what Benjamin Button too. Okay. There's a story of a boy who ages, but Benjamin but doesn't age. Okay. Does it sound like your story? My personal story? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's in between. Right here, right? <laughs> it is both, on the outside, an old, decrepit man, but on the inside, stuck at 13. 35. I'm not decrepit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 35. Yeah. yeah. I had a quick question, though. We did the scene too that where I uh, have the baby, and then the baby starts talking. Well, you know what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brad's gonna do the scene as Brad indicated. Brad plays a woman who will be having a baby. Yes, <laughs> and you. Well, you just get into it. Uh, I didn't get the signs. <laughs> Is there a script that I can read? Into it. I'm, I'm improvising you're, now. You're okay. Playing, you're, you're playing yourself, so just whatever will be true to your story. When you have a I'm playing a 35-year-old Asian man. <laughs> well, I would have been a lot older because I saw you looking a lot older than 35. Not that old. It's the sun. Uh, yeah. Speak, my child. Speak. Man, that's one baby. <laughs> Brad is playing a lady priest in this. Speak, my child. <laughs> wow, that's a holy baby. <laughs> now, I, I know you're afraid to use your voice, but come on. The doctors say you can speak, so speak. 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 I'm the baby! <laughs> have a bad? Yeah. You think you have a bad because you're the twin whose voice didn't go through puberty? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the Kmart feel. <laughs> the Kmart scene worse. It's a dying industry. <laughs> How do you think I feel? Why and see? you feel sorry for yourself. I would kill to have a bad voice like that. <laughs> You have a humongous penis! Take the display down. <laughs> this display is America. <laughs> and 
and it's our dreams. <laughs> I just, I wanted to be original. They beat us to the punch with their big wig dollars and their fancy pants dreams. It was the big wigs and the fancy pants. <laughs> we were just humble entrepreneurs at the first stage of entrepreneurship. <laughs> Trying our hardest. <laughs> I didn't even get to turn the sign on the door and say, Enter, enter one and all. <laughs> you were such a long sign. <laughs> but no, we are authentic selves. Living out the authentic American story. Maybe that's what it is. That's what it is. We need to tell the story, not just sell the story, tell the story. Hear ye, hear ye! <laughs> What's up? Look <laughs> inside! I'm sorry, enter, enter! What? I was just on my way to pick up my son from school. That's right, come in! Five, <laughs> wow, you're so strong. What does your boy love to play with? His Xbox. <laughs> Besides that, historically accurate Girl dolls? <laughs> I've never seen him do that. <laughs> I guess that could just be because there's no good ones on the market. <laughs> Has he met Hester? <laughs> wow, she looks ill. What happens when I, when I pull her string? What does she say? I committed adultery. <laughs> Why'd you give me this doll? <laughs> pull, Dad. pull the string and you see how it looks like your mom? Oh my God. What's it say? Turn know. up the volume. <laughs> I'm a cheating whore. <laughs> Your milk bottles and your cubbies. You're done. 
but you can't stop me from doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> Can you drive me to someone? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you did. <laughs> Shit, that's a big wheel. <laughs> I predicted which way you were gonna go. Now, why don't you tell me in your own words what you did to Lucy? Fun dinner time. Okay, we just will have to wait. <laughs> People don't like our op-eds because of their hateful sentiment. <laughs> uh, 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 do you think people really want to watch a CSI spin-off about the saddest times in American history? Actually, my, my sister uh, started a shop where she uh, explores that exact uh, idea. And then, yes, it's very popular. And Brad Pitt's executive producing this? I am. Ow! It's gonna be great. All right, let's get this scene done. We get to meet you. Oh, well, I have to go watch all my stuff. <laughs> I smoke. Me! <laughs> he just yells that every time he exits the room. He's still speeding. Uh, you gotta take it from me. Hmm? You gotta take it from me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Should I still be here? <laughs> Got you an Xbox, not a typewriter. You're gonna have to do your stories on this. That's useless. What am I gonna do with that? Gonna have to figure it out. <laughs> hey, man. So, tell me again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got this part on this new CSI spin-off, yeah. and I wanted to incorporate Xboxes into the script. But they were saying, no, we have to do a CSI show about the era of fake news journalism. <laughs> One of the darkest times in American history, where people don't know what they can believe from trusted news sources. And Brad Pitt was there, but he smokes now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I... Like, tell me again what room we're going in? Like, what mission you want to do today? Yeah, we're going into the velvet room. Yeah, that's where we're gonna find them for sure! <laughs> As you join us. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> oh, I died. <laughs> hey, hey kid. Yeah? How about when you grow up, you come back and play with us? I'm 35! <laughs> I'm 35 years old! No way. I am. Why do you keep talking about juice boxes, then? <laughs> I get thirsty. <laughs> Listen, this is too close to home for me right now. I gotta take some time and figure out if I'm gonna do this show. Oh. <laughs> I was, that was, that How was can you relate to the real-life problems of adults? <laughs> I'm 35! <laughs> like in dog years, or...? <laughs> We're letting you go from Netflix customer support. No one can take you seriously on the phone. We don't trust the advice you give them. That's fair. In fact, most of the people who ended up speaking with you thought they had dialed a wrong number and were being pranked. They were very mean about it. They were not very mean. But uh, hey, the severance, that's three months, and then you can start collecting unemployment. Probably gonna use it to buy my kid an Xbox. It's nasty. So, you're a good dad. I wish I had had a dad like you growing up. You still can. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> weird. What do you mean you adopted your ex boss? <laughs> He's an ex boss. <laughs> 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 